this podcast is proudly brought to you in part by our wizards on Patreon. If you would like to support positive content, head on over to patreon.com slash Miss Mary Lou. That's patreon.com slash Miss Mary Lou. It's not the years in your life that count. It's the life in your years. Abraham Lincoln. Now, of course, I realize how reliable really are these quotes that I'm spewing out every week on the podcast. But you know what? (laughs) I really like this one. I mean, obviously, I like all the ones that I pick for the show. But who knows if Abraham Lincoln actually said this, I suppose is my point. However, it's not the years in your life that count. It's the life in your years. Like, how wonderful is that? Encouraging people to not worry about the sum total, but the fullness in which you live the ones that you do have, the day-to-day, the doing the stuff. You can have a really boring, really long life, or you can use what you got while you're here for, you know, helping other people, or going on adventures, or whatever it is that you're like a happy little heart desires. I think that's a really wonderful thought and a very simple way, a very simple way of putting it. So, uh, thanks, Abe. Uh, doing, doing good. Anywho, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Positivity. This is the feel-good podcast where we bring you good vibes by the spoonful. I am your host, Miss Mary Lou Ryan, and it is freaking fantastic to be back in your earballs today. Yay! Um, thank you all for the well wishes for my last podcast while I was at VidCon. I appreciate you. <laughs> I was a featured speaker this year for those of you that missed last time. And I was on a panel and it went great. And I made friends and it was overall a really lovely, really re- rewarding time. Re- re- really rewarding. That's that's a little difficult to say, but uh, once you do, it's really rewarding. <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, let's hop right into the tea I'm drinking today. Now, it was warm, like it was brewed hot, but now it's not hot anymore because it's just been sitting out. Uh, I have some golden monkey tea today. I filmed an episode with Jacob that's not going to be coming out for a couple of weeks, but podcast fam, my wizards over here, you get a little sneak peek. I got a gift set of four different golden monkey teas for my birthday and had not tried them. So Jacob and I brewed all four, gave them all a try, and this one was one of my favorites. This is one of the lightest ones. It's like very much, I pictured myself like lying in a field of buttercups. I can only say buttercups, buttercups, uh, just because Princess Bride, anyone? Um, But this is light, it's floral, it's like honey sweet almost on its own and like simply delightful. It's very, very special. It's a really rare black tea. This one is only picked at the beginning of the season. So, I mean, you'll hear all the details about it whenever I get that episode out, but I'm drinking the rest of it today. And I had to wait for it to not be hot anymore because Golden Monkey has more caffeine in it than typical black teas. And the average black tea has about a quarter of the amount of caffeine as a cup of coffee. I don't know how much Golden Monkey has in comparison to a cup of coffee, but I was feeling it a little bit and I was like, oh girl, (laughs) you need to slow down a little bit. So uh, this cooled off. It's definitely warm in Los Angeles right now. So no complaints necessarily there. Um, I believe it's in the 90s. We're in a bit of a heat wave all week. If wherever you are is a bit warm, I feel for you. I'm right there with you. (laughs) I need to do another cold brew episode, I think. I think it's time. I haven't done one in over a year and it was like a taste test sort of deal. So I think I'll think. I, uh, I got to do just a how to do cold brew because it's the best and I definitely have a lot of it in my fridge right meow. So cheers to whatever you're drinking today, my dear listeners. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Light and floral and oh, so freaking lovely. All right, so moving on to our first segment, self-care experiment. So last week I talked about taking things one step at a time. This helped me get through all of the craziness that was my schedule in college. It helped me the week leading up to the convention. And I continued to practice this this week. And it's just, uh, it's been the best. In general, when I have a lot of things on my plate, if I try to think about doing all of those things and all the stuff I have to get done in X amount of time, it can be just really freaking overwhelming and no one wants that. Um, so parceling tasks out just one thing at a time, whether it's like by day, by hour, whatever that timeline is that makes it easier for you, it really, really helps get a lot of stuff done without actually thinking about getting a lot of stuff done. It's like this weird brain hack where it's like, all right, all I have to do for like until later today is record the podcast. That That's all I was thinking about and it helps and it's wonderful. And this definitely came in handy while I was at the convention. I've never been to a convention before and I have really bad anxiety. Um, just anxiety and panic disorder and social anxiety and all the things and really slowing my brain down and just being like, okay, right now I have like an hour. Let's go see if they still have smoothies in the Instagram lounge and it's gonna be okay. Instead of being like, oh my God, I was gonna do this and then this and then this and then what if I don't have time to do blah, 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 blah. And my anxious brain just wants to run away with me. And I mean, that's not fun. So even as far as not just like things on a to-do list for productivity reasons, but just going through a day that could have otherwise been really, really overwhelming, that was a really cool way to use this. That wasn't like specific, specifically task oriented. So it worked really well for that. Um, I am just really thankful that I brought this one back. I think... <laughs> It was just really, really good timing because everything has just been crazy. And of course, after the convention, I got sick, which I guess is typical for a lot of people that happens at conventions, I guess. Although I do remember a day my allergies went kind of bananas. And uh, when my allergies go bananas, I get sinus infections. So that was my post VidCon week, but I'm feeling not 100%, but much better than I was. Some antibiotics later, even then when I was recovering, I was like, you know what, how do I feel today? How do I feel right now? Um, and it did get a little stressful because I had a voiceover gig um, this past Monday and I was like, I have one week to feel better enough to record a kid's cartoon. And I did. It wasn't easy. Jacob was wonderful. He records with me. We're doing it together. Um, I'll let you know details when I can, you know. Um, and he took a little bit more of the workload <laughs> than me just to give me a little bit more time to rest, which I really, really appreciate. Uh, but it went well. And instead of thinking every second of every day, oh my God, I got to get better by Monday, got to get better by Monday. I was like, you know what? How do I feel today? Better than yesterday? Awesome. How do I feel right now? I feel like I want to eat something or drink some tea and then just take care of myself one step at a time, taking it as it comes instead of freaking out. And, you, know, you know, I had some freaking out moments when I let my brain slip into, oh my God, I got to feel better by Monday, but I did it. So this week, specifically for my new self-care experiment, oh, this was a big one, um, relating to my anxiety and being at a convention in general where I'm more often in social situations, I really concentrated on just being brave. Being brave. Of course, listening to my gut, like if something felt like really wrong or off trusting my instincts and getting myself out of uncomfortable situations and stuff like that. But as far as like, hey, this really nice person said they saw you talk at your panel at VidCon and now you're both just drinking tea and coffee in this cool place. You should talk to that person without freaking out and say thank you and maybe get to know them. And it was really 
lovely. Um, I don't talk about this too, too much, um, but my anxiety is really um, crippling and debilitating. It gets to the point, you know, I don't really leave my house much on my own. Um, and as in much, I mean like almost at all. It, I just don't, I just don't leave really. I just have a lot of anxiety around different things and triggered by different situations. A lot of them social or safety hazard related. Um, and I have definitely been feeling it get to the point where I'm like, this is, this is not good. This is a problem. I, uh, I was on a medication for my anxiety and then I had to get taken off of it. Um, I have a, a pretty large team of doctors that handle different aspects of my chronic conditions and other things. And one of them had not communicated the anxiety medication that I was on to my primary doctor. Um, and apparently what I was on is actually really not good for me to be on. It did help with my anxiety, but it was having other effects that I wasn't realizing. So I was promptly taken off of it. Um, and so I've been for the first time in a while, not medicated for my anxiety, which has been a whole other thing. And I'm definitely aware I'm probably going to go back on medication for it, but it's been interesting to really kind of sit with myself and my anxious brain and feel what that is like fully for the first time in a long time. And sometimes it's manageable and uh, other times I don't leave my house. <laughs> um, but by going to a convention, being somewhere that wasn't my house with other people and, you know, trying to take advantage of the opportunity of where I was, it really kind of, it led me just to embrace the situation and where I was and just try not to be constantly judging myself and everything happening around me or being paranoid about what other people are thinking as my mouth is flapping and this and that and the other thing. <laughs> I apologize if this is triggering for anyone with anxiety as I'm talking about it. I don't mean to, of course, um, but if it is, I apologize. And again, seek help. You're worth it. Seek help. You're worth it because you are worth it. And, you know, anxiety is no joke. It really um, can be very limiting and very emotionally painful and physically painful even because it manifests in your body in all sorts of different ways. Um, so while I was at the convention, I was like, ooh, I'm not on anxiety meds right now. This is going to be an adventure. How am I going to handle this? And I was just like, you know what, Mary? Just breathe through it. Obviously, don't do anything dumb that you wouldn't normally do, you know? And I had a wonderful time. I really did. And it's, it's really lightening for me or enlightening for me to know that like, if I am in that situation, there is some small part of me that is like, you can do it. I'm still here. Your little sociable part of your brain. You got this. And so like pat on the backs to me like that, that was really, really nice. However, I, you know, it's not like everything is better and all is hunky dory because the amount of energy that it cost me uh, was astounding. It was absolutely astounding. It's probably maybe not as much energy for a normal healthy person, mayhaps someone with more extroverted tendencies to be around other humans uh, as much as I was. Um, but yeah, so that was a long story, but... <laughs> I um, hope that it was helpful and I'm really proud of myself. And again, very aware that, you know, just thinking about being brave and stepping outside of yourself isn't necessarily a solution. It's, it's really not, I don't think, uh, for myself and a lot of anxiety sufferers, but I, I, did, I did better than I thought I was going to at this convention. So A plus, well done me, I'm a wizard. Community news. <laughs> I 
welcome to Community News, one of my favorite freaking parts of the podcast where I take good news from you, the listeners, give you a little shout out and celebrate your general awesomeness here on the podcast. I do a social media shout out on all the places at Miss Mary Lou, asking you for good things that have happened to you in the last week or so, and I got some really wonderful responses, and I can't wait to share them with you. Okay, okay, okay. So first on Instagram, this is from It's a Charming Life. And she said, on a Swedish trip to visit the husband's family and my anxiety is doing okay so far. So this is very coincidental. We were just talking about anxiety. So good for you. That's amazing. It's a charming life. A like wonderful of you to as an anxious human to be like, yeah, I'm going to go be in a foreign country for a little while. Sweden is a very different place than, say, the United States, for instance. Even just, like, the days themselves are much longer right now. Midsummer is not too, too far gone. Um, So that's really, really wonderful. Good for you. I'm glad that you're able to go. I'm glad that you are with someone that loves you. And I have super, super been enjoying seeing your pictures from Sweden. Sweden is definitely, definitely on my bucket list. Uh, But I know as a human with anxiety, it can be really difficult. And I'm really proud of you for going outside of your comfort zone to give this thing a try again and to you know what and you're succeeding the fact that you're there you made it and you know it sounds like you're in an okay headspace so far you said you're doing all right you have already succeeded you're doing amazingly keep it up you're a wizard you're a swedish maiden wizard a Next, we are headed over to Twitter. This is from Katie Cornwall 97 and Katie says, I got a new job at my school as a writing tutor. So A, new job, A plus, well done. High fives, wizardness to you, Katie. That's wonderful. New job, new opportunity, new fresh start. Fantastic. And as a writing tutor, that's wonderful. I assume if this is good news that both teaching and writing are things that you enjoy, in which case, like, you're doing great. You're doing super great. Way to do something that, like, combines two awesome things. And maybe you just like writing. And maybe you just like tutoring. And, like, either is awesome because you get to do it. (laughs) Uh, New jobs, I know, can be a little scary, especially if you're jumping from one to the other or if you're at a new school so it sounds like you're in a new place adjusting getting a feeling for the new surroundings doing the thing but you know what you applied you did it you went out there and you got the job you got the job you are an employment english writing tutor wizard Yes, I've learned that when I talk about people being wizards, I have to lean back or otherwise the microphone, it's just too loud because my wizard excitement is just, it's too much. I don't want to hurt your ear balls. So yay, Katie, you're wonderful. Thank you for submitting your good news and good luck at your new school with your new job as a writing tutor. I think that's freaking fantastic, you wizard. Heck yeah. And speaking of wizards, this is from one of our wizard official wizards over on Patreon. This is actually from Christina, who's a super wizard on Patreon. And Christina had a birthday and an anniversary this past week. Oh my goodness gracious, you're a wizard! All of this, you're the celebration wizard, the wizard of festivities, doing all the things, a wedding anniversary and a birthday, which is a birthiversary. Let's be real, it's still a versary. 
I don't, that, is that what that means? I don't know. But Christina, happy, happy birthday. You did it. You're a human for another year. You lived all the life for the last 365 days. And you did it with your husband. I don't know how we devolved into this voice, but you're wonderful. You're a wizard. You're fantastical, magical. Actually, you are actually a super wizard. So thank you for all of your support and for being just a wonderful human in general. Congratulations and happy birthday, Christina. Good news, everyone. I have good news. Welcome back to the part of the podcast where I dive into the depths of the interwebs to find a good news article for you. It is important, again, to stay informed on the happenings in the world. However, it is not good to get to the point where you can't function as a human. So I got a nice little goodness cupcake of news for your ears, and it's going to be great. Okay, okay. This article is titled, Creators of Jamber Mugs Hope to Bring Back Joy of Living from Today.com. So, Alan, who is an engineer, one of his favorite people growing up ever, period, ever, was his grandfather, Dominic. Um, And as Alan got older and went to school, got his master's, etc., He was sitting down with his grandfather, Dominic, one day and noticed like his grandfather just bringing a paper cup up to his mouth to drink from it. His hand was shaking and it just looked particularly difficult for him. And he was like, Grandpa, if you have so much trouble just drinking a paper cup with water in it, like how do you drink coffee? How do you do your morning coffee ritual thing and his grandfather responded to something along the lines of don't get old everything hurts like how sad is that coffee in the morning had been a part of this man's life for so so long and you know someone that admired him so much his son it was just really hard to see something that you know used to bring him a lot of joy and everything just kind of taken away from him in his old age and you know uh, his grandfather had been through a lot he's a veteran etc so alan being an engineer um teamed up with his chemist wife gotta love me some science um yeah his chemist wife diana another awesome science person they decided they actually wanted to try to do something about it. So the two of them put their brains together and designed what is now known as Jamber mugs. These are ultra lightweight drinking mugs that like have a thick enough grip so it's easy to hold on to and they leave your hand in kind of like a neutral position so it doesn't really put any strain on your wrist or your fingers themselves like these are feats in engineering and are really just a labor of love and they've even been able to expand their business recently because they were accepted this past year into harvard's innovation lab uh, which is really really wonderful so like more people that have needs like his grandfather dominic have access to stuff like this and of course the first model ever was given to grandpa and he just treasures it and is beside himself that you know someone loved him so much that it inspired this amazing product and he can drink coffee in a lot less pain than he used to um i the, it's just oh, how wonderful is that they have since sold over 50,000 mugs and again they're comfortable lightweight really easy to hold and i just my heart <laughs> i i can't i can't take this again the brand name is jamber j a m b e r mugs if you do know someone in your life who maybe needs a lightweight easy to hold uh situation to get their coffee or their tea in the morning i i just uh this pulls at my freaking heartstrings, man. Especially, you know, I obviously I, I can't relate to, to his grandfather too heavily, but when my chronic conditions were and are really bad, I like, I can't do most things. 
you know, getting dressed really hurts. I can't really do anything but sit on the couch. And I know people like my grandfather has always been one of my best friends. Um, when I was ill growing up, he was the one who would take me to doctor's appointments all the time. And we'd watch soccer games together and everything like that. And he is currently in a lot of pain in his older age and what he's going through. And it, it hurts me. It hurts me to see him struggle and go through this. Um, and just the thought that something can be done. There are certain circumstances where little things like this can be done to just brighten someone's life. Like they said themselves in the name of the article is like to bring back the joy of living. Like there's a lot in a cup of coffee. And I, I know my grandfather does enjoy his cup of decaf tea every day uh he does like that very much and he loves the mugs that he he does have so that's really special to me so this this whole article really really struck a chord it's compassion it's science it's like coffee and tea and wonderful people who have been on this world for longer than the rest of us and it just like it melts my soul um so yeah good for you alan and diana you awesome science power couple you thank you thank you for changing the world for the better really it's really really wonderful and of course like these mugs aren't just handy for the elderly but other people with physical disabilities of any sort that have trouble with gripping or it's even manufactured where I believe you can use an artificial limb to lift these mugs. So like, that's amazing. Everyone deserves to be able to have a cup of tea. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I, I, I hope that you love, love, love this news story because I certainly freaking do. And it's good to know that there are awesome people like Alan and Diana making things like Jamber mugs. Um, and that innovation is continuing and not stopping. And it doesn't always have to be big things, right? Like even when I ask you for good news in your week, it doesn't have to be these enormous events, accomplishments, etc. Like something as simple as manufacturing a mug so that a person can enjoy a beverage in less pain, like, that little thing makes a huge impact on people's everyday lives and it is not to be underestimated. All right, my lovely listener people, awesome, and viewers on YouTube, all the things. Wow, you think I'd be better at sentence structure by now, just talking into a microphone by myself for half an hour. Yet here we are. Thank you so, so much for listening this week. Uh, what are some of your thoughts on things like being brave and anxiety and, you know, do you have anything good that happened to you this week? Or, uh, like, how does this Jamber Mugs story make you feel? What does it make you think about? Et cetera, et cetera. I would love, love, love to hear your thoughts. And again, we have our Patreon page if you want to become a wizard. Make it official. You get all kinds of perks, like tea and all the things and yes just wonderful stuff so that's it from me i hope that you all have a wonderful week and i'll see you next thursday this podcast is lovingly produced, directed, written, and created by yours truly, Miss Mary Lou Ryan. Our music was composed and performed by Jacob Kahn. Our logo designed by Hilda Meyer Post. And if you'd like to spread a little positivity into the universe, I would love wherever you are tea partying with us to spread the words with those who could use a little cheer in their cuppa. Thank you so, so much for listening, and I'll see you next week.